actually went off on this rant about in defense of like Mac. Like I support that. Whatever, fine. But like Windows, it's because you play games. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, because I drive a Linux desktop or Linux whatever outside of a MacBook for the basically the same reason. Hey, the the user configurability, like uh, freedom, whatever. But I don't know. When, yeah, I get it. Games, I guess. Yeah. yeah and like makes... and like you know, Open Broadcast Studio is this streaming software no. that's doing this that runs best on Windows. It's like. Yeah, it's like there's. I think there's enough stuff that is like designed to run on Windows that I'm kind of like, okay, for like a beefy desktop, I'll do that. Uh, yeah. Oh, I guess we're live right now. Have <laughs> we been live this entire time? No, like just in the last like 30 seconds. So By the way, is this P- is this PG-13? Can I can I curse? Yeah, do whatever you want. <laughs> okay, I don't care. Cool. Fuck. I gotta shit. figure out how to get. <laughs> <laughs> I figure out how to get a link to this though. Um... Maybe it's just... Where where are we live? On YouTube. Oh. Uh, let's see. I want to get to my actual YouTube channel. Did you get engagement? I saw that there were like thirty views. Was that yeah, thirty views that or thirty watts? No, okay, that's fine. I think there are like four max concurrent viewers. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. Sure. Or 31. <laughs> no, okay. There we go. I found the link. I'm going to share it. Uh, I advertised this on social media. I said I'll share the link. It's <laughs> good. Let's see. I gotta figure out like how to actually keep track of the chat. There should be a way to get like a chat source in here. Uh, you mean um, like where like the actual chat from YouTube shows up directly in like the, the sidebar of this. Mm. Um, in the sidebar of the projected screencast view. Yeah, or yeah. Your like, own... So like we could put it so there's a little chat window like right above your face. Mm. Um, but I, I'm not sure how to do that. So it's funny you guys have the requirements .txt for stuff, but that's for what like tests. Uh, yeah, for lit. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I think that was actually we could probably get rid of this because uh, oh yeah, for generating test cases, but for lit um, we changed that to be a workspace dependency now. So I think we're using the 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 built lit with LLVM. Mm. Um, Earlier, we did not have it that way. Uh, yeah, I could I could fix that, and then yeah, I have like some utilities uh, for like like there's this uh, Python command line tool called Fire. Um, mm-hmm. It's like turn any object into a CLI, any Python yeah. object into a CLI. It's really cool, and so I use it for like you know generating boilerplate stuff, um, which I was just working on a little bit today. Uh, isn't it all boilerplate? Yeah, well, <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. All right, cool. So, uh, tell me about uh, tell me about <laughs> the Python bindings. I don't know anything about them. I've like kind of seen oh, them used, but you're serious. You're serious. You're not being uh, facetious. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, I, I mean, what, what is it? Okay. I don't know. So it's like it's, a Python API and then it will generate yeah. MLIR or what is it doing exactly? I, w- I was going to, I was going to go into like, um, the sales pitchy kind of like, I love this thing. This is the greatest thing in the world, but you're asking for, like, are you asking for a sober description or, or are you asking for like my love letter Pyian to the bindings? Uh, either one. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so the sober description is yeah, it's um, wrappers around the C API for various things in MLIR. The extent to which the C API is complete um, changes over time. I mean, like so, 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 right? It's not the C++ API. Not all things are exposed. You can't do everything you can do through the C PV API. Um, but there, I don't, and I don't know who the other users, consumers of the C API are. But I imagine that there are others that might be doing like FFI for MLIR, like, oh, Julia wanted to use the C API for stuff. Anyway, the point is, yes, so it goes through the C API. It's just a Python shim slash wrapper around the C API. That's the meat and, that's the like meat and guts of what they really are. And that means, well, okay, anything you can do through the CPI, the C API, like generate IR, run passes. So there's a wrapper around the pass manager, stuff like this. Uh, what else can you do? You can walk the AST, it, you know, you can, uh, given a module that has been quote unquote hydrated, created, there's a mapping from the AST of the MLIR to, oh, objects in Python, and I can iterate through the regions and the blocks and the operations per block and all this stuff, right? Um, so that's the the sober take that it's a pretty good it's not complete you can't call arbitrary passes you, sorry you can call arbitrary passes you can't call arbitrary um you can't use arbitrary patterns mm -hmm. so you can't just like launch a, a you know greedy pattern rewrite you can't like add patterns and then launch the greedy rewriter and then it'll do that i was just talking to Jacques about this like yesterday he's like oh we should have that it does sound um, useful. Yeah, I mean, um, transform dialect, if you're familiar with that thing, has a kind of like hacky way to do that. Like, it's a, you know, they, they bind one pattern at a time, call it an op, and that's one. And, and then you can use transform through Python. So if you wanted to like bind arbitrary patterns, uh, that's one way to do it. Transform's fine. I mean, I might like not really think about it much harder than that because mm -hmm. if I'm going to do some extra work, why? Um, yeah, okay. So I'm looking for, I'm, I'm like kind of multitasking. I'm looking for the jacks. Yeah, okay. So now I found the thing that I wanted for the extra work. Okay. So that's the sober take on it. The Payeen take on it is I started working on this thing like a year and a half ago because I didn't know any C++ or like I, I barely knew how to use C++. And I was like, I want to start playing with MLIR and there's these Python bindings and that's a, that's a good way to get started. Right. Mm -hmm. Supposedly. Right. I was just like, Oh, Python, I know Python. Uh, and at that point they were some weird simulacra version of MLIR. Uh, so you don't have any in tree, so I can't really show you, I guess I could copy paste arbitrary code in here just for the sake of like having a prop. Let me, find some stuff so it, it, you know a year and a half ago if you pulled up the tests that are in llvm for the bindings you'd be like and, and if you were like an mlar noob right it's like so i was a complete mlar noob you'd be like what the what is this what the fuck is this i can i can barely i can barely make sense of mlar let alone this thing because there was a very there was very little like affinity between what the the patterns look like mm -hmm. uh so what i'm talking about is i'm, I'm jumping to so let's see So there are tests. Let me see. Am I in the right test? I added a file called Python Bindings MLIR. Where is it at? That's that's uh, just under tests. Just under tests. But that's okay. uh, not sure what you're about to paste, but just make sure it's cool for all the people watching. Yeah, I mean, it's not. I don't have any closed source stuff. I mean, I do technically have like closed source stuff, but I don't see it as the issue. So I folded out that tree. Can you pull it up on the, on the, can you, I don't know why I can't see it. I can see I'm in requirements.txt. Okay. How is it? I get, I'm not, am I not synced with you? You're synced. I, uh, I just can't see if you're in like a different file. Like it doesn't tell me like which so you, file you're in. Uh, sorry. Let me, uh, live share focus on follow, focus, follow participants. Whoa. I'm following you. Okay, now I'm following you. And if you go back to the file, 
Uh, oh, you that's why I was confused. Can you make it? Yeah, can you? That's why I couldn't see it. Can you uh, change the extension to Python? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, so uh, let's see. Let me grab some. Okay, so here's an example, right? No, yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, so like, this is some weird love child of Python and MLIR, if you're familiar with Python as a, just a thing, mm -hmm. and MLIR as a compiler framework. Mm -hmm. You, like in MLIR, you, you rarely have to manage insertion points explicitly in this way mm -hmm. today, right? Like the builder essentially manages the insertion points for you. Of course, sometimes you see this kind of stuff like, Oh, set the insertion point here, set it to mm -hmm. the terminator, prior to the terminator, whatever, whatever. And again, I didn't know any of this stuff. I know this stuff now, but like, and then, so that's, that's, that's confusing about what this is, what's going on. If you yeah, are like familiar with, with like, if you don't know MLIR context, if you don't know location, if you don't know insertion yeah. point, it's just a yeah, bunch yeah. of the cooks. Yeah, exactly. And then in Python, if you don't know MLIR, this is, what am I doing? Entry blocks? What, what? I mean, again, I was a complete noob in a year and a half ago. At that point, mm -hmm. I had basically only like seen LLVMIR, not emitted LLVMIR, truly my own LLVMIR. Anyway, so I started playing with this stuff as a as like a like I don't know CPP. I'm gonna I'm gonna say play in the safe end of the pool, the shallow end of the pool, the Python end of the pool. Mm -hmm. I start I started doing this stuff, and then at some point it occurred to me like, oh, I I should submit a PR for LLVM, right? And off my career goes, essentially. <laughs> like, 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 seriously, th th that decision was pivotal and, and, and has changed the trajectory of my life. Because now I am the only, you know, I don't know, I'm a core contributor on the Python extensions, Python bindings for MLIR. And I get recruiters, <laughs> I get, I get interest from and attention from, you know, the, the, the celebrities, whatever, I'm being whatever it's silly right but like uh it's great right so so it's a very useful thing i've turned it I, i've worked pretty hard to make it pretty useful outside of just my whatever fucking around at this point you can write python that looks like a dsl that is familiar to you as a just a regular ass python user and emit mlir that is legal and 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 you know you can apply passes to it and et cetera et cetera, all within the comfort of one shell REPL environment. Uh, for any dialect, that's my claim. That's like the claim of my dissertation, essentially. That mm -hmm. I have built out enough infrastructure that if you turn on the bindings for your dialect, you get an immediate free front end for your dialect. And that's a that's very sales pitchy and. I got to, I got, I got to like corroborate that with evidence and stuff like that. But that's the claim. That's the Paian that like you turn on the bindings, you can, it's, it's a free front end for your language where, where MLIR is an IR for your language and, and you don't necessarily have a claim, right? Like mm -hmm. LLVM has a, has a whole ass, whatever claim in order to emit the IR mm -hmm. um, and TensorFlow, sorry, mm -hmm. stable HLO has a front end in TensorFlow and mm -hmm. blah, blah. You're, just vanilla, like I put in a bunch of work on the dialect and the ops and the invariants and the passes, but I'm not a language designer and I would like to be able to provide my utilities and passes and target specific code gen for uh, users to use actually, rather than write the IR by hand. Cool, just turn on the bindings, you're done. So that's it, that's a sales pitch. Cool. And um, yeah, so, so the, the, the interesting thing is it's a, it comes out of a kind of a misunderstanding of what compilers are for and what MLIR was for, right? Like, if you do work in MLIR, most of the time, it's a, it's, it's already a, a premise that you have a front end. Mm -hmm. You have TensorFlow, and you want to emit NVIDIA NVPTX or, or TPU target code or whatever, and you want MLIR for the middle tier, mid-level, mid whatever uh, optimization passes. Packing loop unrolling, tiling, vectorization, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You already have a front end, and the compiler itself is going to do the job with the compiler, which is optimize your mm -hmm. uh, intermediate representation. And I, again, like hyper noob, I didn't understand that that's the point. So I, like most, a lot of people don't care. TensorFlow doesn't care about having another front end. That's the, the point. Yeah, but like I just found a, a, a project that is using the Python bindings as their front end called uh, Palace. I don't know if you've heard of this. This is like. Yeah, that's Jax. That's yeah, that's Jax Jax, well, it's Jax's uh, kernel language, right? And like mm -hmm. that seems like a huge deal because, you know, they were probably not going to write a ton of like custom MLAR stuff. Like it's like they're like very excited about having the Python as their as their main well, the, like, I mean, entry point. So, so, so the funny thing is, right, Jax is an example of the kind of thing that I was talking about where I don't know what came first, Jaxpers or Jax, but they had they, – it's like usually people, I think, invert the order of the things that they build when they build a stack, mm -hmm. compiler stack. They're like, I got an idea for a language. I got all these ideas about how the, you know, kind of silly things like how the syntax should look. Yeah. And then they implement the language, the front end, and then they're like, shit, I need to target multiple architectures. I need an intermediate representation that is mm -hmm. more generic and less kind of like idiosyncratic. And yeah. whereas coming to MLIR and being like MLIR gives you utilities for implementing an IR, just serves those people's purposes. And being like, oh, I want to go in the other direction. I want to build a front end for IRs that's so Jax, I don't know what came first. Did the Jax first come first? Did they build the front end? And then but but what I'm saying is Jax targets stable HLO, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's another instance of a thing where like the, the, the existence of the um, front end presupposed an existing the IR. They don't I'm surprised. So you're saying Palace uses the bindings and doesn't use Jax? Uh, it does both. I mean, because they they have to interoperate with like the kernel language lowering to whatever is the TPU or GPU backend, and then like integrating that with Jax to do like all the nice Jax API things like VMap and stuff. So you can like VMap a kernel and stuff. Uh, it's really cool. I've I've started using it. I'm like I, I need to. Uh, it's like everyone's very excited about me making our stuff fast using this but uh, <laughs> but there's like some missing like lowerings basically in the compiler and so I'm like talking to the to the devs and being like okay like let's figure out exactly in your compile in your compiler or their compiler in their compiler yeah in their like palace lowering to TPU backend do they have so there if I grep for slash search for palace in Jax yeah, it's, repo, it's in Jax yeah and I think I think okay, most of it source. is public. Um, like I think the the MLAR stuff is all public. Uh, uh, so what's funny is this is Adam Pashka's project, right? Or some he's connected to this, right? Somehow. Somehow. Because the guy that presented at MLA yeah. at LLVM said that's that. not Adam. That's uh, I forget his name, but he that that's like his main project now. Um, but yeah, yeah, I know that that was, I, I know that, you know, I haven't met Adam, but I know Adam's a white Polish guy, <laughs> and that guy was not a white Polish guy, but uh, he was on the slide, he like said, Adam's name was on the slide, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and Jacques told me there's somebody in Jax whose life I make miserable with my PRs on LVM. That could be it. <laughs> yeah, and that could be the reason why, well, so the thing, interesting thing is like, I was like, why, how? Uh, that could be the reason why, because I didn't realize that Pals was going through the bindings. They are, yeah, and I can find it for you. Um, it's. I mean, I know Jax uses the stable HLO bindings. Yeah, if you see under Palace, there's like a. It's called Mosaic. Yeah, Mosaic is the TPU backend. Yeah. Triton is the GPU backend. Um, and so I think the palace call is like the main API. Anyway, we're getting very far afield here, but, <laughs> okay. but the point is that, well, yeah, they, they, they love, uh, I mean, I guess you make their life hard by doing backwards well, title changes maybe, yeah. uh, but, uh, but they also like having it. Uh, okay. Let's, how, how do we add, how do we enable Python bindings? Yeah. In, uh, so this is a good question uh, and gets, gets us actually right back into Jax's camp. So they, they have like a, so I don't use Basil. This is the problem, right? Mm -hmm. 
I am purely a semen kind of person, even though people trumpet basil. Uh, so they have a basil, whatever this is called, work something script. I don't know what mm -hmm. this stuff is called. Build script. Yeah, this is like CMake lists. Okay. Yeah. Sure. But but there are like there's a workspace also. So I don't oh. know. And there's also there's build basil. There's build and there's also a workspace file. Yeah. The, so the workspace file is like where you declare external dependencies and then build mm -hmm. files. Build or build basil. They're the same. Um, that's mm -hmm. where you define like individual compilation targets. Okay. So um, in Jaxlib, there's a build which talks about Py library imports, but actually that's probably the yeah sorry that's a build just for arbitrary Python I think it looks like. But the link that I sent you is the thing that Jack that Jock sent me is how they do Python bindings. Mm -hmm. So you you look at this and you tell me what this indicates to you about. Like reading this and just taking the words at face value, they're sim linking a bunch of stuff rather than actually building much in this file. Yeah, sure. Let me just get this onto the stream so our zero viewers sure. can enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, let's see what they're doing here. So I see they've got sim link inputs for MLIR stuff. Um, actually, that I've never seen symlink inputs before, so I have no idea what that means. Um, <laughs> and then they there's have a function, a pi library, okay, where it depends on something called MLR libs. Uh, more symlink so functions. Can you go back up to that? Mm -hmm. The pi library, because I know what MLR libs is. Um, but I don't know what Pi Library is. Okay, so Pi Library just defines a compilation unit that wraps a bunch of Python files, um, like so that you can include them somewhere else. This is a so with the depths here. This is a name, or this is a yeah. So this is so another you, you target are, somewhere you are, inside Jaxlib. Oh, so you yeah, would be yeah, able yeah, to so find this, yeah. a file with this like exact path. Um, well, and maybe I can find that right now. So it'd be Jaxlib MLIR. MLIR libs. Yeah, so that would then point to this build file and would point to this. Okay, pi, okay here's the here's the real stuff. Pi extension, I think this is what we're looking yeah. at here. But the yeah. uh, GPU extension, MLIR. Oh, this is a big file. Uh, yeah, this is the place that we need to be looking at, not the Simulink stuff, because this is where all the real work goes. Uh, but this is what symlink inputs. This is, I think, the name of the um, main like dependency that they're pulling in when they define the Py library. Uh, yeah, I don't know why they're symlinking things around. I feel like that's not necessary. Um, rules Py library sources is MLIR libs Py files depths on registered Jax dialects. Okay, yeah. Py extension. I don't even know what pi extension is. Is that okay? It's a that's wrapper the wrapper about pi, pi binds. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, wrapper on pi binds. Okay, but then the wrapper doesn't do anything. Uh, it's just copying shit. It's, yeah. I don't I know what pi binds. I, I, I hate when devs do this. Right, like so many layers of indirection for what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So where's pi bind extension? Ah, uh, if Windows. Okay, that's that's why this is a problem because people are trying to get it to compile on Windows. Um, well, we can. I mean, I know what a so you know what pi bind is, or you don't. I'm guessing it's a binder around uh, yeah, a, a yeah. C API. Um, uh, no, 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 pi bind is the greatest. It's up there with like. I don't know, bro. It's up with there with like blowjobs. I don't know. <laughs> I told you, bro. PG thirteen. Like so, 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 so. PyBind is a set of utilities for writing Python exten C exten uh, Python extensions, which are traditionally conventionally prior to the existence of PyBind C. So this is a community project that has a bunch of stakeholders and users, like. You know, bajillions of stars, this kind of thing. Uh -huh. uh, started by a guy who's a professor in something called inverse graphics. 
Okay. Um, and it's 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 just it's just amazing. It's just it's it's so high quality, so well maintained, works beautifully. Maybe it has some deficiencies that I'm not aware of because I'm not a, like a gray beard whatever. But it enables you to write Python C extensions, extension modules that use CPP just so easily. It's the API is so great. There's and and there's so much uh, C plus plus templating magic and wizardry that goes into making that true. That hats off. That guy deserves a Turing Award for writing all the templates. Okay. Anyway, and this so, is TSL so, is the name of this project, or? Oh. I don't know what TSL is, but PyBind is just like the uh, Google project uh, that you you know get. Sorry, not Google project. GitHub, you know, GitHub slash PyBind. Uh, PyBind eleven. I don't know what that. Yeah. So. So this is, I, I'm just going straight to the battle wrapper. Uh, yeah. Sure. 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 Okay. What's funny is that there's a guy, there's the first contributor in that uh, set of little avatars. I don't really understand how it works, but like if you look through the issues on PyBind, every single issue has, it's got to be automated, has a tag from some repo that he manages at Google. Mm -hmm. So I know that guy's face. I don't know who that guy is. So he's a contributor, right? But it, if you click to any issue, <laughs> sorry, uh, there's uh, he's generating some kind of like tagging system. But down at the bottom, uh, no, I guess I lied. A, a bunch of issues that I looked at, where at the bottom it says like tagged something with his thing. I don't know. I'm a full on liar now. That's too too. <laughs> Maybe All it's right, like whatever. a GitHub uh, work, you know, GitHub something. actions thing. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Permission. Something. Yeah, maybe uh, something like that. Anyway, okay. so so TSL, I don't know what TSL, is, but PyBind. Oh, it seems is like known. some wrapper around it, but this, this PyBind has an official Bazel extension, so uh, this seems like the thing yeah. that you would use. Let's see. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just. Go ahead and You're gonna try to Leroy Jenkins this. I was just about to wonder, like, are you Leroy Jenkinsing? Oh, we are. Copy yeah. We are Leroy Jenkinsing. Uh, sorry. Yes. There we go. So, okay, let me just cut this. You don't even need to save that or anything. Right yeah. Now, um. Okay. So we are in workspace, and I've got this project has like a huge workspace already. Um, that's fine. Okay, so this basically says uh, just fetch all the code straight from GitHub. Okay, I need to. Pick you gotta a fill in. You gotta. You, yeah. Yeah, I need to pick a commit. Um, let's see, release from last week. Why not? Uh, here we go. Oh, do I have thin bindings? I do not. You, you no, 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 no. You do, you do, you do, do. Go to the extensions. You can install thin bindings. <laughs> no, no. Uh, that, that would not. That would not be livable. Just yeah. Oh. The, okay. The, the top one. Yeah, for sure. That one. Yeah. So it's just I don't need to do anything else. It's just no, it's enabled. Not. Yeah. Um, no. Oh, sorry. It's asking me for stable commit. No, you can do that. That that works. No, that's the that hash works. works. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I but the the I didn't oh, see sorry. what I was deleting, and then down yeah. here it says stable version. So I need to actually pick a version for that PyBind 11. Basil. And now I need uh, PyBind 11 uh, latest release. Okay. Uh, so that is 2.11.1. Uh, 2.11.1. Uh, you should double check that. I believe that the URL on the previous, uh, sorry, the strip prefix should be the same in both, right? Um, no, because what it's doing is it's it's fetching the the archive, um, mm -hmm. and then like by default it adds this. Oh, the, sorry. To 
the actual content of the archive. And those it's are different two, for each those project. Are two, yeah, the two different yeah, projects. Yeah. One is the Basil yeah, wrappers right. and one is the actual PyBind thing. Yeah. So this, I mean, this should be good, right? So now what I need to do is figure out how to get into a terminal so I can actually um, like run these. Uh, and this is. So what's Indeed. funny is I see your terminal. It's uh, control back to will pop up the same terminal you had before. Yeah, but that's this is okay. This yes. is weird because it's a PowerShell terminal, yeah. and I want my Ubuntu terminal, not PowerShell. Uh, so it, does it does it support? If I click this, can I? Uh, here we go. Ubuntu Windows. Okay, okay, there we go. That's got all my nice like configuration. Okay, cool. Uh, so now let's see. I want uh, I bind eleven. I guess I bind eleven Basil. Uh oh, shit. This is the thing that I cannot fucking say. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing is that yeah, it's 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 uh, uh, gotta fetch LVM. Well, the the thing is that with this this project, you know, we have Google's on call rotation. That is responsible wow. for keeping it up to date to the latest LLVM commit and fixing backwards incompatible changes. So sure. I get a new LLVM commit pushed to my project every two hours or whatever, <laughs> uh, which means that every time I sync with the latest, my fork with the latest version of the project, then it's on a new LLVM commit. It's got to clone the whole thing and rebuild it if I'm going to build the whole project. But since I'm only so, building PyBind, uh, I, can, I can build it in the background while we just like tinker with PyBind. It only takes about 15 minutes, so. Um. It's funny. I wonder if that thing that you just described. No, that can't be. Sorry, you get. You have to refork, reclone, hair or air, to mm -hmm. for the new the new commit hash to show up somewhere that matters to you, right? Like on your machine to be able to to if you. It's not being constantly updated on your machine. It's being constantly no, updated no. on. No, no. So yeah. if I and I just did that like a few hours ago, and then I didn't build it. Um, so I was I was being a shithead. And I'm also you can see I'm also on like a branch right now. So like I should like clean my act up. Uh, so let me just quickly. Um, how, how can I tell from your term? You can tell from your terminal that you're on a branch dialect template. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so okay, let me just uh, get switch main. Get switch to C. Uh, get stash pop, uh, and then... okay, so it did not give me any actual targets from PyBind 11 Basil. Um, and it's probably because this doesn't define any targets. It probably just defines macros that generate targets. Um, but at least it's showing that it knows about the awareness of the project. Um, so that's fine. And now in the background, I'm going to um, just. I'm doing this on a different terminal, so it doesn't pollute what we're doing over here. But I'm just going to sure. rebuild the whole LLVM <laughs> HIR stack while while we're waiting. Um, it shouldn't take very long. Uh, the, the, re the reason why I ex exclaimed about uh, <laughs> the, the the rebuild was like, the last time I tried to use Basil was for for XLS. Oh, yeah. The, the, la the previous and first time that I was playing with Basil was for XLS. And I must, I must, because this is not the case that, you know, I, I had like an epiphany and then reverted the epiphany. It was like, when I was doing that, at every time I would build, it would rebuild for some reason LVM. But I wasn't pulling, but I wasn't like re-pulling or anything. Yeah, one of, one of the reasons it will rebuild is if any of the optimization flags change or any of the compilation flags change, it will do a full rebuild. Um, and so that means if you change, like, so like Basil has this flag dash compilation mode opt or dash compilation mode fast build or dash compilation mode debug. So basically if you change from like enabling debug symbols to not enabling debug symbols, it will do a free re full rebuild. But it's really easy to do that because it's just like a, a three characters on the invocation of Basil that causes that to change. Um, I mean, that makes perfect <clears throat> sense. That, that's, I, I, that would happen with believe... CMake too, right? It's just harder to do it in CMake because you have to run CMake again yeah, exactly. right, before you run yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. But I don't. Yeah, I don't. That's not what I was experiencing. I don't believe, and I should probably revisit the project to be able to figure it out. But it's like, like I'm I, I'm familiar with the fact that if you change some kind of thing that changes source lines or changes the manufacture of the object file, that you should you might 
and sorry, does it? Okay, so here's the question, right? If you do some like optimization minus G or, or minus O1, that'll change all the code. But it doesn't do this. I mean, whatever. It's I know the answer to this. If you change some file that's a CPP file, it's not going to recompile from scratch because Correct. that doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, it's going to recompile was, that compilation unit and then yeah, everything exactly, that exactly. depends on it. Yeah, but just yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, there is but, decent caching. But the, yeah, so that's what the thing everybody says. Like that's the beauty of Basil is like somehow it, it magically efficiently caches everything. And I was effectively not getting any of that even not even like C cache kind of behavior, but like, Hey, I didn't touch anything and I just changed the line and it rebuilt all of LLVM. So that must be user error because, but, but so that's what yeah, I'm, that, that, that doesn't that happen it, to me normally, but, uh, and I, I bet I could debug it with you if we were like in that, situ if you're ever in that situation again, just like give me a call yeah, and I'll help you yeah. debug it. But, uh, but yeah, yeah that's, that is uh, uh, like an annoyance is that, uh, you know, if you're, not really precise with Basil, it can cause full rebuilds. It's quite annoying. Um, uh, but yeah, in the meantime, because okay. 15, 15 minutes is quite a while. Yeah, so, well, it's about, it's like two thirds done. But like, let's just look into, because like, in order to make this work, we actually have to take this and like start defining some targets that are used, right? Um, yeah. So, so let's go. And I don't know what's up with this local config Python, um, because I have, uh, I actually have Python built as a, dependency of this project. So like it builds a hermetic Python version and doesn't use your system Python. Oh, um, why? Just out of curiosity. Oh, uh, because I needed to install like, like the CI needed to install like lit and stuff. And if you don't do that, then it will use like different versions of Python and like dependencies won't install properly because they'll be like, oh, this one doesn't support this version of Python and whatnot. Um, so it's just easier to have it fully hermetic. So yeah, it actually, it, um, I, I don't think it builds Python. It doesn't build Python. It just like yeah, okay. is uh, a pre-installed binary okay. for Python. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, but then it, but then I just noticed that this says local config Python, and I'm wondering if that's telling it to use <laughs> uh, a different Python than I expect. But okay, we'll see. Um, I mean, as a as a first pass try, I would I would I would comment that out. Well, I would comment that out as soon as it blew up. It, it yeah. Blew exactly. Up. Yeah. Yeah. But so okay, we're we're looking at. Um, let me pull back up the browser. Jax. Uh, well, no. So we're looking at the. I, I'm not trusting Jax. Like I, sometimes I look at Jax for inspiration, but like if they're you know doing so much weird redirection for getting things to work on Windows and stuff, it's like not worth sifting through it. I think it'd be easier to just have like follow the documentation. Oh, here we go. Hermetic Python. Look at that. <laughs> These guys clearly work at Google because they've thought of. Uh, well, yeah. Does anybody else use Basil? Uh, I mean, if uh, you're a big enough company that you have like a build farm, then I think it's, it can be maybe. a really good idea. But uh, but no, pretty much only Google. Um, and so Python interpreter, Python bin. I think I had. Uh, did I? Python interpreter. I'm inclined to copy paste pi extension, not pi extension, but the uh, like unindirected pi extension. Oh my gosh. Uh, hold on. Sure. I think I just need. Hold on, let me check in the browser uh, query. Oh, damn it. It is, is the, I can't run more, yeah, because I'm, I'm compiling LVM in the background, and so it won't let me, uh, okay, I can just uh, kill it, and, okay, so I'll get Python 310, uh, Python 3. And then the next thing, I mean, I get this is true of CMake too, but Basil build will just pick up from where it left off if you kill it halfway through the mm -hmm. compilation. Um, so, okay, can I, I just, oh, okay, that's good. Okay, so I, okay, so I added Python 3 as the hermetic interpreter. Now, we need.
need to actually load the Python extension in somewhere. Okay, so where would I mean where would I put this? This would just be at the top level of my project, I guess. Because I do like no. In an ex I would I would want to define the bindings for like the entire project all at once, or would you do it like dialect per dialect? No, no, no. It's definitely um. There's schools. There's something like school of thought on this again for first pass. Let's do everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's the simplest yeah, yeah. one. Uh, well, sorry, 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 sorry. For a first pass, I want to see if you can generate upstream bindings, right? Because oh sure, uh, those are known to yeah. work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, I mean, we'll and, just and, we'll just put it here in like the base build. That should be fine. Um, and then you actually. Load... Uh, you you have to drop some artifacts in some places to get this to work for your own dialect, which is not a big deal. It's like five or six small files. Sure. Okay. Um, well, then let's just do the upstream bindings. Um, so we are looking at. Um, okay. So then it, it doesn't say. Da, 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 so this is this is why I think we should copy paste from. Jax. Yeah. So okay. Because I don't see. Well. Okay. Just just so I have the. I think it helps me to um, just see like there's usually like a good doc string like the way that Basil is documented is the doc strings on the actual mm. um, like source code rules that's like a Googleism mm -hmm. where they're like the best documentation is always attached to the source code um, I buy so this doesn't have it doesn't oh okay have so well okay well so pybind extension just calls to native CC binary. So it just generates a shared yeah. object file uh, with yeah. some stuff attached to it. Um, by default, visi by default visibility hidden. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, I was just trying to see, like, okay, is it doing something weird with this, or it's just passing along C ops? Um, yeah. And then, but where are the actual like? Okay, this is what I'm a little bit confused about. Is I guess you specify like what you're doing the extension for by passing in the depths. Yeah, where does the depths get passed into? I mean, it well, just gets, gets passed pawn. along to CC binary. So yeah, you so basically have to compile your CC binary somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, say that again. Say that last part again. Well, like you're yeah, this is this is doing a CC binary, and then it's expecting the input to be one of the dependencies of that CC binary. So you are basically going to be compiling something in a different CC library or different whatever I don't know what the rule is we'll see what Jax does um, and then and then that's what you'll pass as the input um, and then I don't know what builds a PyBind 11 compatible library so then PyBind library is I guess how you define the extension and then that, that is just not what to CC library no <laughs> no Go to C++ I, uh... test for I mean, this is pretty simple. There's only three rules, right? There's there's PyBind extension, there's PyBind yeah. library, and it says PyBind library use this is can be used as a dependency for PyBind extension. Linked to an extension. Yeah, no. So yeah. so an ex, so an extension. Yeah. So you don't want to use PyBind library. You want to use PyBind extension. Right. This would be if I was defining the bindings myself. I think. Uh, no. No. If if I read that doc string, with uh. Uh, the, within the context of PyBind, I don't know why you need a particular. Uh, or you're saying you this would a, be the the CC. This would be it. like passing whatever extra compiler optimization flags you need to build C bindings that are compatible with PyBind. That yeah, it? that's it. Yeah, that's okay. it. Got but it. but how is the, How are those two different? Go back. I mean, so this one is is creating the shared object file. And then this one is creating just a, a standalone, like statically linkable library. Oh, an archive file. Yeah. yeah. But can you not? Okay, this is a dumb question. Uh, if you does the CC binary? I mean, there. Sorry, go up. Oh, why is it saying? Yeah, the the thing that's confusing me is this is binary. The other one's library. Library is here means static right, archive. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, okay, yeah. Just so so, just do uh, binary, right? Again, I, I don't know what the subtle difference, nuance difference between, like, why you would need to compile a static archive in such a way that it can be linked against a PyBind extension. 
because I always just produce SOs. I, I don't know what like what is, I, I mean, know what's so yeah. Stuff. I th I think in general the like the belief with Basil is to like split things into really small compilation units so that you don't have to recompile as much at every step. So that could be part of it. Mm. Um, like Maybe. so, like Google Google's style is one header file, one CC file is one build target, um, and and you Good. can glob things. It lets you glob things, but like that's that's like how they teach us to to write C plus plus code is then you have like basically one source file is its own compilation unit, oh, uh, uh, and and then you get advantages with caching. Um, that's why your files are so big. That's why they're like thousands of lines, I think. No, that, that's because, um, so internally in Google, uh, you're supposed to put a build file in each subdirectory where there's actually source codes. And so you're only defining targets for the source code in that directory. But open sure. source projects, especially things like JAX, um, the, you have to, well, not all open source projects, but for JAX and Python ones in particular, if you build with them with Basil, you have to put all of the build rules at the base of your library, uh, like in the, in the root directory for, for some weird, strange reason. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so that's 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 why you'll see like thousand line Basil files, especially in like LLVM, right? Uh, Sorry, that's not what I was talking about. I was talking about thousand line CDP files. Oh no, that's not why. I don't know why. I don't think we do that. I don't know about actually, that. Actually, I am. I'm thinking. Actually, I'm conflating two things. I'm thinking about thousands of lines in Jack's source, Python source. Okay. Before we get diverted, uh, I think so. So try this. Uh, can you draw? Can you? Uh, so we're gonna drop a thing right here in this Basil file, right? Yeah, I mean they're, they're okay. So like, if you saying that like some of these are already like like sparse tensor passes, right? That's the, the, like the, the stream. The, just just literally the first one. If you jumped all the way to the top, uh, that that one that's the that's the root. So so this should. So this would be pi bind extension, right? Um, yeah, uh -huh, exactly. Here, pi extension is just coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, pi bind extension. Can I copy um, paste here? Is this, this is the place where we're gonna drop stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm also gonna copy paste the pi extension. Yeah. Wait. So that's uh, that's. Okay. I mean, that's the same thing. Module name? Yeah, I'm not sure which. Uh, okay, because their their pi byte extension is a different pi byte extension, um, right? It's not the like it's like a wrapper around it, and they have something called module name in that pi byte extension that's not. Oh, sorry, normal. you're right. So I think yeah, I think right. if we just if we just don't have this function at all, um, and then we just use uh, like the just replace the function call. That Jax has with iBind extension, then I think that should work. I'm just looking at there's a name, there's a oh, there's no sources. That's the problem. What? What is TSL? That's, I don't know. That? That's that's some other external project. Um, Tensor standard libraries. It's XLA. Mm. Yeah, okay, let's see so what their, this. Their Pi extension is doing something fancy. Their Pi bind extension. Oh shit! There's a bunch of stuff in here. Wow. Jesus Christ. Uh, what are you? Hold on. Let me uh, catch up. I got. I no. I got you. I mean. Uh, This is X, this is Google slash XLA. Yeah, I uh, can send the link here. Yeah. So the the line is wrong. I sent this to the wrong lines. Yeah, no, sorry, that's the right line. Okay, so we're looking at TSL pipeline extension open source. Yeah, there's a lot of args. Uh, Extension module. So where is TSL? It has no oh, tensor standard. Um, yeah, what? Is CC shared library a universal thing? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. If static depths. Can you not just import this thing at the top, like the same way that they do? The Jack does? Could. Yeah, yeah, I could. I would have to add the TSL as an extra dependency, um, which I'm not sure I'd want to do. Like if well, uh, not, if the goal is not, to like figure permanently. out, right? If the goal is to figure out like how to how to properly integrate this without having a weird dependency on this random TensorFlow thing, then then yeah, then uh, we'd want to do it you know smarter. But I can just pull the Jax workspace Maybe. for TSL. Um, let's see. That's God. the other thing is there is no TSL. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, and the the funny thing is. Okay, there there is a there is a an MLIR okay. There's some MLIR stuff in tree and LLVM. You mean Basil stuff? Yeah, sorry, what am I saying? That was yeah, still if it's two years old. Brilliant. Okay, it's it's XLA that pulls in the TSL dependency. Uh, so I have to go look at XLA's. Uh... Okay, uh, uh, you want to scuttle that and and try and try this other thing. What's the other thing? Just try doing it yourself. Uh, well, will you and and taking advantage of whatever is. So there's. Uh... Let's see. Sorry, before I proclaim. Man, I feel dumb for recommending, for suggesting this, and and also not having done any homework on it. Uh, well, it's, just... it's also something I want to do, so it's like a good. I mean, I'm gonna have to do it at some point. Let's see, TF vendor. Oh my gosh. Ah, so they vendor TSL and XLA, <laughs> and then we have a macro for exposing the vendored uh, source code. Oh, this is horrible. Okay. No way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna uh, do that effectively, but maybe if I just look at this TSL. Okay. Look at this. Sorry. Look at this instead, because. Okay. So this is the Python bindings. Header and depths. Yeah, okay, so I know what these things are. Uh, let's see. Features. Right, I mean, so this is the CC library that's MLR Python bindings core. You wrote this code. Yeah, didn't you? okay. No, yeah. I didn't write Basil stuff. I wrote. No, I mean, I, I've, I've written some of the code that is compiled here. But so, for example, if you jump to any of the CC binaries down there, these are very familiar. Mm -hmm. Like ten, like ten, thirteen, like what, one thousand thirteen line. Linear algebra up. dialects, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so this compiles a Python extension that has code for the linear algebra dialect. There's actually only like one function in there. Uh, and so this is. This is um, yeah. This is just not using the the Basil helper or Basil's okay. whatever. Okay. So thing. I should just be able to link directly directly against this. I'm pretty link sure. Link in the link in the sense of like drop. like add it as a dependency, right? So I should be able to do pybind extension, uh, and then like put in here. This would be LLVM project MLIR. Uh, here. Well, you don't link. You don't link that. That main module isn't linked again. It's it, it's one of a bunch of things that are linked together. But right. So I would I wouldn't have any sources here, right? Because Pybind extension doesn't allow you to pass sources. It would just give you like. Uh... Yes. Well, so let, so I wonder what this does. If you uh, try just that. So what is the name? MLI is it MLIR like? 
Yeah, it would just be like Basil build test extension, I think. No, I could not find it. Um, so yeah, okay, what does, oh, sorry. Uh, the PyBind extension back to the Basil definitions, right? It does, yeah, it just adds .so to the end of it. So I would do test extension .so. Um, okay, Basil build. Oops, Basil query. Okay, so it did, it is here. Um, that's you. Okay. Some bindings don't go to the terminal. Okay. So, yes, extension. So, okay, so it actually built it, or it's tried. To, it's trying to build it, right? And it hit some errors, um, but it's like defining the target. Um, and drop the la like... Drop those. Drop those two. The the second two. All right, what I can I can do it to right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. The problem is an, uh, it can't find local config Python. Um, so there's something with that workspace definition that it's not happy about. Um, Python local, let's see, Python 3.10, not a regular file. Okay, so it can't find, it can't find Python. Um, right. And let me just, um, so build. Okay, so I find it there. Uh, let's see if it's in, and it's looking in uh, Basil bin, uh, Basil air, external Python 310. Oops. Python 310 slash Python 3. Okay, so it's looking for. Um, workspace. Uh, or actually, I want. Yeah. Uh, really? And it is Python three. I have Python three there. I don't know why it's complaining about this. Um, One thing that is that I can't, see, I couldn't see the top of the error. It was cut off. Yeah, um, it looks like so. So this I think is the the main error right here. Um, test extension SO depends on Python headers, local config Python headers in repository which failed to fetch. No such package, uh, and it could not. And the reason is because it couldn't find the. Like, so I've told it to look for Python 3.10 colon Python 3, and it's looking for that in this location, and it can't find it. Um, OK, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of this. Oops. Just try again. OK. Python configuration error failed to find Python 3.10. <laughs> Uh, user bin, user local include. That's not. Oh, it's, yeah, it's looking. Even... Wait, you tell me it's looking for the like like dev headers or something. I don't know what it's looking for, but there's nothing in user include that looks like that. I don't think. Right, it looks like it's looking for a Python binary in that location. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, which exactly. Would be kind of a weird place to look for a Python binary. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, there's nothing there. Um, what? Okay, okay. S sorry. Can you tell me? So, so. I don't know how to activate this overlay thing that I linked you to before. Did I send? I sent you a link, right? Oh, like you're to trying it. to do it on your local system? No, no, no. I don't have Basil. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to interpret this thing, which defines some CC libraries. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, 
well, these CC libraries, here's the minimal working, here's like the hello world of whatever we're attempting to do, which is if we can get this thing to work, this, I'll send you the link. Here's the link. Which is aptly named MLIR bindings Python core. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just a CC library, right? How do you use this thing? It's in this project or re or directory called LLVM project. I, I can I can I can uh, uh, just build that right. So I can Bazel build um, LLVM project um, MLIR Python bindings core. Nope. Uh, oh, repository Python runtime is not defined and referenced by this. So I need something called Python runtime. But like so that target is like. You know, when you load it as a Basil project, that target is like ready and available. Um, it says I need something called Python runtime headers. So I gotta figure out like where does that come from? Um, let's see, it's just expecting you to have a project called Python runtime with the headers in it. Um, so maybe I'm guessing that I already have that. Um, uh, yeah, so I have something called Python headers. Um, but it's not with something. this exact name, <laughs> Python runtime. You, you want to know something funny? Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know how this works, but, uh, you know what source graph is? Uh-huh, or no? It, uh, it's like a global search. It's better than, it's way, way better than uh, Google, uh, than, than GitHub search. Anyway, I, I just typed that in, Python runtime, at Python runtime, and the top hit is something that might be recognizable for you. It's a def LLVM, it's from TensorFlow. It uh, sets up a repo mapping between, ah. this, is the, this is the funny part, this is the funny part, wait for the punchline. It sets up a repo mapping between at Python runtime Drum roll, please. At local config Python. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's so. Uh, like I said, source uh, source graph is better. I never heard of it. Yeah. Is, is that like just like a? So apparently, actually, some group of people that left Google to rebuild some uh, source graph. Yeah, search. code search. I know code search. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is yeah, the, yeah. this is. Google code search, but made externally. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I've got to start using this because I love code search. That's like my yeah. favorite tool. Uh, okay, this is really funny. LLVM configure. But LLVM configure is something I have. Okay. Um, configure. Okay, so I just need to basically, and I don't even need to do local config Python, right? That's I mean, that's a PyBind thing, so maybe I, I need to figure out how to do that at some point. But um, I thought that was just for the sake of hermeticity. Is that a word? Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, but like, yeah, so like, but is PyBind 11? It's like, you know, oh, maybe I have a Python configure already. Um, no. OK, whatever. Uh, OK, so hold on. First, let's just fix one problem at a time. Import mm -hmm. LLVM, set up LLVM, LLVM configure, uh, repo mapping, Python 3.10. OK, and then Python bindings require Python headers. Let's do this. And actually, it's funny because it's not the reap the name. It's not headers, right? It's Python headers. So actually, maybe I do need to do local runtime. Oh god. Okay. Uh, so what was this? Local config Python. So if I go back here, now the really thing what I have to do is I have to figure out how to configure Python properly here. So I'm guessing that this macro has some options in PyBot. What is it? PyBot Python configure. Um, 
let's see. Python configure is repository rule, Python version, Python interpreter target. Activated Python environment. Create local Python repository. Get Python bin. Python bin. Get Python lib. Get Python include. I mean, this is what it's going to be looking for the Python include. Um, but it's just doing that by. Oh. Uh. <laughs> it just does a sys config get path yeah so it's like asking you give it the interpreter it's asking for all the paths that it needs yeah. and it's setting things up according to that path okay so then yeah, yeah okay well, then we do need to tell it what interpreter to look at um i don't understand the failure mode how did it get if you didn't give it an interpreter to query to run it was it was looking for the default some default interpreter somewhere i mean like let me just search in this project for user shouldn't there be a default here no Yikes. Okay. So then it's it's finding some, maybe if I just do like which dash a Python, is it looking there? Python 3? No? Okay. That's strange. But okay, so let's just try this. As will build Python by its core. No repository visible as LVM. Oh, sorry. Okay. It's the same thing. Yeah, well, okay, so now, now it depends on local config Python headers, and it's it's not able to find the interpreter. So this is back to that original error. But that's good, okay, I'm getting a mental model of what's do, going on here. Do you have, this is a dumb question, if you run Python right now, do you, get in, do you drop into an interpreter? Yeah. But that's not the same Python, right? The, the Python that's installed yeah. here sure, is... Sure, is, is, uh, sure, sure, sure. As will run uh, Python three ten Python. Oh no! Yeah. See, I mean Python three. I did, and so now I get the actual interpreter that's installed there. Um, and so why? Python Can you do a mapping thing from local config Python to that to that name? Yeah. Well, I I think local config Python is doing other fancy stuff, right? It's like setting up names in a very particular way. So I think it'd be easiest if we just figured out how to point it to the right. Uh, Sorry, I guess I meant literally that thing that you already have, uh, but it's yeah. So sorry that that yeah, I'm confusing myself. The name is the entity that it is configuring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, what? It's cre it's creating that entity. It is creating that entity yes, by querying. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, such target Python not declared in package. In the empty string. Not declared in package. It says, did you mean Python 3? So I'm like very confused why it's like target Python. Oh. Well, where do you have that written? Says, oh, sorry. No, 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 no. This is, this, that was, uh, I need to look at this error. I was looking at the wrong one. <laughs> uh, this screen's so small. Okay. Um, Wait, oh, uh, so yeah, those so are it's, Python. It's still, that's, it's a, that's, that, that's, that, yeah, that's a Python stack trace. Right. It's still down here. It's looking for the, not a regular file. Okay, so I mean, one thing you can do is, uh, what is it, Bazel build, and then you can say like debug sandbox, I believe. Nope. Sandbox Minus debug. Sandbox. Yeah, okay, so this one uh, should preserve the actual location where things are. Uh, so if I now look here, there's the weird 
uh, like hermetic file path where it's uh-huh. doing all of its work. Um, and you look and build, so, and you look at build Basil. Yeah, I should, I should be able to see. Oh my gosh, end. Okay, build Basil should give me. And so now, okay, this a, okay, this alias is giving me Python three, and then actual is select. Like I feel like maybe the alias thing is what it's like struggling to find. Um, So maybe if I just skip the alias, maybe I should just do Basil query uh, Python three ten all. And so that gives me. I mean, these are the targets, right? So I don't know why it's not able to Python items Python runtime. This is. What is the sen- in, in what in what sense do you mean it's struggling with the alias? I don't know. I mean, like, I've never used alias before, so I don't know exactly what it's doing. But, like, this suggests to me that this should be a Basil target. And this is the list of all the Basil targets there. Um, yeah, you know what sort of crap is grateful? Just looking you for type, examples. You type, yeah. that, you type that exactly. Mm-hmm. Python interpreter target equals, and then you can set the file type. Python interpreter target equals... It's slash search, yeah. Equals, let's see. Interpreter target. Yeah, I get a bunch of workspace hits mm-hmm. from TensorFlow and Py. Oh, well, PyTorch. Okay. And see, I can't share my screen. Yeah, you're. Yeah, this. That's not gonna happen. So. Okay, let's try PyTorch. We've got this interpreter that they're passing in. And yeah, that's it. See, that is, where is interpreter? Def interpreter, oh my gosh, really? Where is it, def interpreter? Ah, okay, it's in Python 3.8 defs interpreter. So do we have, I don't think I have a interpreter Oh, uh, true. I found something that is semantically valuable, potentially. No, this is, no, this is pip. This is different. Somebody will be using that word. Okay, sorry. Right, but it's okay. Here, they're, they're, you know, uh, pulling up this. Oops. They're using the Python 3.8, Python register tool chains, right, which is, I think, exactly what I'm using. Um, like if I go to register, yeah, Python register tool chains, it's registering 310. Um, and then it's doing, oh, look at this. Okay, they have, my... <laughs> sorry, you can't see that. So so I, I have this line that defines, yes. that pulls out from this list of definitions, the interpreter. Yes. And that is almost certainly uh, what they're asking for. Not yeah. the, so just interpreter. Source crap, bro. Oh, yeah. I, I believe it. I just have never heard of that. I mean, I've heard of it, but I didn't know that like it was like, good and ready to use. Um, what happened here? Is it for an error? Okay. So let's see. Target headers not defined in the package. Uh, Local config Python. Okay. Well, hold on. It's getting a different error now, so that's progress. Yeah, it's right? progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Query. Uh, what? Oh. Um, so Python. it's just called Python headers. What? Instead of headers? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, now I'm worried that it's like this is like a different version of. Of what? Like, I just pulled, like, this particular tag here, and oh. I pulled some random commit for for this one, right? Maybe they, like, changed the name. Like, they're expecting Python headers in one, but headers in the other. Because, like, clearly it's defined here. Um, so, okay, let's go back to GitHub. Let's go back to Python headers. Um 
local Python and Python headers. Yeah, so here, PyBind 11 Basil has everything called Python headers. Um, okay, so find what it, so find the version, I guess, the version string for PyBind. Yeah, well, so let me, let me, oops, find, just look at, just to compare, look at PyBind 11. Um, and so then this one, it, the problem is that it should be looking for Yeah. Wait. What am I, I mean, this isn't bad. This isn't bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I don't want DSL. I wanted Pi Bind 11 Basil. So you're saying, oh, so you're saying in Pi Bind 11 Basil, I want to look at the That's correct. Pi Bind 11 Find version? The, yes, the version string that they're sticking somewhere wherever they're sticking it. Pi Bind 11. Build, maybe? Wait, but now I'm thinking it might not be that because. Target headers. Yeah, where is it? It should maybe I um, should be looking for, because what is actually defining? Ugh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Um, like I'm trying to figure out what is actually defining this thing colon headers. Like what is looking for that? Something is looking for that, but. Uh, go go back go back oh, to there. Oh, reference here. It's LLVM. It's LLVM is looking for it. But the name oh, has changed. sorry. I, that's my bad. There's a. Well, that's not your bad. You guys are pinned to an older version of PyBind 11. This, but it's my bad for not. I was literally looking at that. It's 2.10.3. Okay. <laughs> at, Great. 2.10.3. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, uh, shit. That's... Let me fucking double check that. It's PyBind. Let's I mean, it's that. faster to just run it. Um, yeah, well, max 2.10.3. Okay. Headers not declared. Uh, well, so you updated both of those. No, no, sorry. I, I just updated PyBind 11, but not PyBind Basil. So I'm guessing yeah. that PyBind Basil has the same versioning scheme? Uh, as, uh, what? Tags? Oh, there's only two uh, tags? Is this a really new project? <laughs> when, when was this project created? Uh, 43 commits. Oh my gosh. Uh, Why are you using this? Why do we have to use this? I don't remember. Do we have to use this? I think we do. Uh, well, I mean, like, this is the official, uh, like, if we're going to, you know, have, like, a proper but, but, Dazzle. But, Emma, no, but, but MLIR is not using this, right? Uh, the, o the overlay, this is the thing that I was interested in, was this is what I was asking, like, 10 minutes ago. Hey, these are declared as CC libraries. Can't you just build this thing for it, it, bespoke style? Mm, oh, so maybe my problem is that this is what you would need to do if you were actually defining an extension. Yeah, pi bind extension. Yeah, I think so. But isn't Which that what I want would, to do for for eventually? If, eventually, in, in short order, sure. But first, see if you can at least. Build, I mean, you you necessarily have to build the upstream upstream extensions as well, and if they're being and if they're being built as CC libraries, of course you can probably slot that right, into but the. Right, so when, but when I try to build them, right, they're looking for PyBind 11 and Python runtime but, headers. But is is right? at PyBind 11 indicating to me that the target is PyBind 11 Basil? It's not no, indicating to me. No, something no, that's that. That's the yeah. So maybe you're saying I don't need PyBind 11 Basil, but that's, still, yeah. still, this one is is calling Python runtime headers, right? But it might. Um, and yeah, Python right. runtime uh, okay. headers is defined by this local config Python, which is okay. PyBind 11 Basil. Uh, control F to doubt. I feel like it's possible that's being defined some other way. Uh, let's see. No, I mean, so, so. Okay, the question is, this okay? PyBind 11 Basil has uh, four years of code in it, right? I'm looking at okay. so okay. even if they're only releasing a particular version, let's just figure out what's the commit that fair they enough, need to get enough. before uh, before they made that change. And I think if I just look for Python headers, I can 
just blame it, right? Get blame. Uh, five years ago? How is it? Six months ago. This is like the original commit? Yeah. Pull request number one. No, one parent. Okay. Oh, and this is the original. <laughs> okay, so how did this project start? It seems like they might have split it out of something that had lived somewhere else. Um, also, how is this so poorly documented in LLVM? This must be like a like a place where only Googlers play. And like, I, I vaguely remember that nobody in Torchimal IR, except for some guy in the stable HLO team is responsible for keeping up to date with whether the Basil builds break in Torchimal IR. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I was on call for that uh, like last week uh, for like keeping MLIR upstream Basil build from breaking, among other things. It's um, possible. But yeah, so I'm thinking, okay, so so do you know of any other, I guess this is where we would look at Jax, right? And we would say like, okay, what's what's Jax doing when they're trying to build? Um, so I'm uh, looking like for where, where are I'm they getting to... their, yeah, okay, let's look in Jax. Jax lib, yeah. uh, where are they getting their uh, Python runtime thing? Let's see. Workspace. Uh, local. Local config Python. Okay, here it's using local config Python headers, but they do not define local config Python anywhere. So that is kind of confusing. So it must be a dependency of theirs. It's probably XLA. Uh, yeah, local config Python. Okay, and then it's TSL that's defining local config Python. Okay, back to TSL. Um, okay, Python configure. Native registered tool chain at local config slash slash colon pi underscore tool chain. What is that? That's in TensorFlow. Yeah, well, tool chains is like uh, how you define the compiler. Like if you want to choose a different C compiler, then you would do a register tool chains. And then there's some interface mm -hmm. that this has to satisfy to like describe what the tool chain looks like. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm guessing that this is probably also coming from somewhere else. I toolchain because local config Python is like not local execution config Python. Ah, oh, here we go. In some places, mm. if you look at like gRPC, and actually I guess TensorFlow as well, they have at the bottom of their Python configure Basil. Oh, what? Third party Python configure Basil. Third party Pi, Pi configure Basil. What the hell is this? It's, so it's vendor. What, what is this? One second.
Oh. I don't know why, but uh, GitHub is slow, but the sort of crap is loaded. Repository rule for Python auto configuration. Hey, look at that. The top of the file tells if you scroll all the way to the top, some sanity can be restored with some environment variables. Python for bin path, Python for lib path. But this is, uh, if you're doing a local, this is, this would, so this is defaulting to the local, the system's Python 3. Sure. Um, for the moment, you can get this to work though, right? Right, so the problem was that it, when I took out the, the hermetic Python, right, it was looking for the local Python and it couldn't find it. So uh, you're saying I can... Uh, well, if, if and only if... Take that out, try to build it, it's going to say can't find uh, user local include. So then if this is right, then I would say Python 3 bin path equals, uh, okay, which Python 3 is user bin python3 and then i would run the same so the, as a so the, the so the lib path i don't know where that's queried actually i guess i can find it in this file okay it's lib not path. even okay maybe i need to do basil build uh was it dash dash n sorry what i was going to say was if and only if this is the this is the python configure script or thing that is in fact being used by your project uh, mm. transitively. Um, I mean, this looks like it's not, right? Because this is like a vendored Python configure in gRPC. That's stolen from TensorFlow, right. which is being pa passed around. Well, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. Okay, I have another idea um, because there is this, the thing that registers the Python toolchain is called rules Python. Um, can, you, can you not jump the symbol to find out where this Python configure comes from? Or do we know, sorry, do we know where this, this Python configure comes from, from Python Basil? Sorry. Uh, yeah, it comes, it comes from uh, this, this rules Python project. Um, which is like its own Basil rules thing. Um, this is where you. This is where you. This is how you debugged what it was actually doing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so so somewhere in here, there's going to be a Python register toolchains. I don't know what. Try. What about just? Can you stub that out and use this one instead? Yeah. Like. Forget. Yeah. So. Forget about. Yeah, at the minimum, forget about load from, yeah, okay. So what do I have to do? I have to put in the TensorFlow one or something like that? I don't know how to do the paths here. Can I, so what I'm talking about is, hey, this, right, right on top of Python configure, you have load, load at pi bind basil, right? That's a path in a Yeah, this is a, this is a, a path in, like, to an external project. Um, like, so the HTTP archive up yeah. here, we loaded pi bind 11 basil. That right, defines right, right, yeah. this at pybind11 yes. basil, and then anything yes. under there is a target defined in that workspace. Um, uh, what? The heck? Yeah, I, th uh, I feel like we are so close, though. <laughs> it always feels that way, which is what keeps me up at night until 4 a.m. <laughs> That's the truth. It's like you always feel so close. And it can, it, it, you, so you hit the recompile button, and you're like, yeah, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. And I don't disagree with you. But just yeah. by the way, just a, by the way, this is this is the worst introduction. Not because of you. Sorry, this is this is the worst no, impression it's a very... of Basil. This is the worst impression of Basil. I will never use Basil. <laughs> well, this is like this. Is, the problem here is that like everything is like so custom, and it's it, partly if uh, it's it's like 
MLIR, at which things have to be kind of custom. But the MLIR stuff is actually not so bad. Um, like if you did like Dazzle with table gen, I think that would be like a whole new thing. Like that's like really custom and confusing. But if you're just like building C++ code or just Python code, then I think it's really, really straightforward um, to, to get it to work. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Okay, well, I, I, I want to take a step back and sort of start from, because we are, like, when I build this, the failure is that it is looking in local config Python, and the name that it's looking for is headers, but the actual name is Python headers, right? And so we were hoping that there was a previous version of PyBind 11 Bazaar. Yeah, that's that, it. Yeah, that used that. Um, but there's not, and so maybe there's a way for me to just add an alias of yeah, Python headers to it. headers, but I've never added an alias before, so let me pull up Basil alias, because um, that might just be really simple. Uh, only works for regular targets. Uh, yeah, renaming, visibility declaration, like, okay, so, like, is it as simple as just <laughs> doing this, right? Uh, just put, like, I, don't, I actually don't know if I can do it in here, but I will try. Um, there's, like, weird rules about what can be in a workspace. Um, so, <clears throat> and I don't know if I can alias, like, something in, like, local config Python, but I'm going to try it. Uh, headers, actual, local config, Python, uh, Python, headers. Okay. Okay, it does not like. Uh, two ads, drop the first ad. No, no, that, that's like a different, uh, Wait, why? What? Is it? No, I don't think that's it. Because I only did one at. No, it's... What in the hell? Yeah, okay, so it doesn't look like you can do an alias uh, externally. Like, like in some... Basically, I'm defining an alias for, like, an external project. Um, No, that broke. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I don't know. Okay, look at this. This is like this is like archaeology. This is like <laughs> software archaeology. Yeah. Uh, look, look, look at this. Oh, interesting. What? <laughs> so this is the the thing that's, you know, fixing the same problem that we're running into. And yeah, how do but we actually, get this in there. Yeah, like exactly. Python runtime build alias headers because I want it to be inside of, like, inside of my Python thing, right? Like I want. Uh, well, so however, I mean, you have a third-party directory somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I can I can go in and actually like change the code uh, in oops, external Python three ten build .bazel. Like I can. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, okay, I guess I'll just use Vim from <laughs> inside VS Code. Uh, okay, so. Like, if I just do alias headers, like, Python headers, right? Like, this should do what we want it to do, because it's in actually in you're, And you're saying in sandbox mode, this should this will this will stick. Oh, yeah, yeah, it'll stick. Even if it's not yeah. in sandbox mode, uh, as long as it's not, like, refetching the source code, it'll stick around. 
Um, so if I just do that, oh, now I have my, uh, I, let's say unhappy about, target headers not defined in package. Okay, so maybe, it, maybe I can't make that change. Uh, hmm. But so the M the MLIR code is referring to Python runtime headers, is it not? Uh, yeah, not Python headers. Yeah. And what did I call, like, where's Python runtime? Because uh, I do not define something called Python runtime. I'm guessing Python configure defines it. Uh, or no, there's there's some alias from Python runtime to local config Python, isn't there? Uh, Python. Mm. Oh, look at these fools. Oh, okay, never mind. Oh, ah, look at that. A native bind, Python headers. Oh, this comes from protobuf? Are you kidding me? Ah! <laughs> Oh my god. So what oh, is that so that is that how the translation is being done? Yeah, binds targets for some external repositories. Oh my god. So so, so but like this Python headers is Yeah, like okay. native.bind. Can I do that? Native bind Python headers. And then, and then I would need to define like a build file that would have that, because that was the thing that we were seeing over here, right? This like random thing. Uh, oh my gosh, this is so confusing. Okay, let's just try it. Uh, I don't know why, but my connection to GitHub is busted. So weird. It's like because I'm on this stream with you, I can't access GitHub. Like they're rivalrous connections or something. <laughs> okay, this would be really weird if it worked. Um, I don't think I can run the macros in uh, the workspace file. Native not defined, labels not defined. Where's label coming from? Huh? Okay, so I need to put this in like a Okay, in a workspace.
Sorry, I lost the stream. It's got okay. it's, sucked uh, into a discussion about sucked into a thing about work. Sorry. Okay, so if this if this works, then it'll be amazing. Um, but so what I have to, what I did is I set up like a new macro over here um, that will do the same sort of binding of Python headers to mm -hmm. a new rule that I wrote that is an alias to local config Python headers. So this is like trying to do the same thing that I think TensorFlow is doing mm -hmm. uh, here. So they have this uh, protobuf, or they say this is needed by protobuf, that they have this native bind call, which is in the macro that needs to be called, and then that is pointing to this alias, mm. which just goes to here. Okay, so I, I think that is also what I've set up. And let me try it. Nope. Okay, it's still, the problem is it's still looking for it in local Python config headers, um, right? Like, like this MLIR upstream build Basil is saying that this project has to have a target called headers. If it's not there, mm -hmm. don't know what to do. Um, do you think? Okay, why don't we do something crazy? Uh, do you? This is what. This, can you patch that line? I was gonna say, do you have commit access upstream to? to... Oh, of course I, I do, of course. But what, like, what do you, what do you want me to do here? You. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so, so I'm, th I'm trying to think. Like, could we add? Um... I could have a branch on main. No, that's not what I'm. I, I, because I'm, I'm trying to think. Like, how would we make it so that it works for both, right? Like, because someone clearly is using this Basil file. Uh, and uh, you know those Basel rules to to point to that very specific target called headers. You sure, you sure somebody's using it? Cause that uh, you sure somebody's using that? Cause the last touches on that file is uh, 2021. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. I mean, like, so if you change that to point from like from Python headers to just headers, or from headers to Python headers, right? If you change it to like the current correct name Actually, in you know, pa in PyBind Basel 11. Right, that would fix this problem. But then someone who is probably depending on that would break downstream. And as long so, as it doesn't break in uh, LLVM upstream, that would be fine, right? Like we'd be happy because that's that's the, all that's the, all that's required to merge into LLVM is it doesn't break any um, tests, you know, in the actual. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, look, I'm very devil may care. I don't give a shit. I'll, I don't even care if I break people. Um, to be honest with you. Yeah, but well, if you break LLVM the... internally, it's gonna it's gonna revert it. But the Basil build is like yeah, not yeah. supported, right? So we could change this one line of code here, right? Uh, and we have a good reason to, right? So okay, if we change uh, everywhere, well, it's, one, it's a few, it's a few, yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah, a few yeah. lines. But if we change this everywhere from uh, Python runtime headers to Python, Python header. runtime Python headers, I think that would solve our problem. Um, it, yeah. Okay, if you want to do it, I'm fine. Um, so, so I was following you. I have a basic understanding of what was going on. You have a better way of being able to sell Playing this. It. Yeah. 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 But I think what I, I'm I can do I can, the last. The last. I thing can I approve. Want... I can approve. I can yeah. approve. Right. And I can merge on your behalf. Uh huh. The last thing that I want to double check is that because this is called Python runtime, and then in mine it's called local config Python, and I'm trying to figure out like how is that forwarding happening. Um, to, from Python runtime to local config Python. And I think that it's, if I can just confirm that it's happening through like Python configure in PyBind 11 Basil, right? Then I know for sure that there's like a direct link between these two things. Um, so let me just double check. Um, PyBind 11 Basil. Um, and then I want uh, what is it? Uh, on runtime? That's not in there. Local config Python. Because it could be that, like, where where is this name Python runtime that's used in the MLR upstream? Like, where is this Python runtime name coming from? And I think it's coming from here. It is the TensorFlow specific. Mm -hmm. Python runtime name, uh, and that's like that means that TensorFlow is the only one using it, right? Or anybody who follows the same weird convoluted convention as TensorFlow is the one using it. Um, one second, and, uh, one second. Would 
And this would break them, though. It would right? de- it would definitely break them because then they would be looking for. Uh, I mean, here you, here they're they're forwarding it to local config Python Python headers anyway. Yeah, so they're dummies instead of also, just I mean, sending it up, putting it upstream. Some, yeah. There is some intermediate broken state that they're trying to maintain by having this like wrap around path that gets you to the same can, place. So in theory, get, that means that we could just take all of the places where you see Python runtime headers, replace it with local config Python Python headers, and that would cause that would not break anybody because TensorFlow would still have that target defined. They mm-hmm. probably wouldn't even notice, right? Because nothing would break. Uh, and then they'd have like a bunch of dead config codes, sure. which is that's their problem. Uh, and what then, you, and then you, our, hmm? when you if you git blame, does Gardner hide who uh, added that file? No, no, no not here. Intent TensorFlow. Uh, let's see. No, it doesn't. Oh, yeah, it does. Seven years ago, my God. Okay, if it's seven years ago, like who cares? <laughs> <laughs> like, like they need to update their. This is code rot. That's, uh, <laughs> that's how I see it. Uh, but what did I have? Uh, I am curious about the blame for this particular. I looked some guy named Peter Hawkins. I know Peter Hawkins. Yeah. I do you not know Ingo, but you know Peter Hawkins. I don't, I'm just bullshitting. Who is Peter Hawkins? <laughs> uh, okay, wait, hold on. We're gonna go. We're still getting. Both of them? Okay. Yeah. I, I got to sign off in four minutes. But uh, okay. this sounds like, okay, this is like a, a small breakthrough. Uh, and and I feel like later tonight what I'll do is I'll, I'll make that change. I'll send it to you. You can approve it. And then uh, yeah. and then as I'll long as it doesn't break the LLVM build, that's right. It's That's how it's designed. Uh, yeah. We, the, Google is paying people a lot of money to be on call to fix issues like this that break upstream. <laughs> cool. Oh, man, you spent a lot of time running around. I feel bad for you. I, I just sat back and watched, and like, I, I hope I. No, this is great. So I, I'm I'm learning a lot. Uh, yeah, me too. I think uh, you know if we do this again uh, next week, uh, say, or two weeks from now, or whatever, then like yeah. we'd actually start to make some real progress on like adding Python bindings because this is literally just an hour and a half of fixing config. One one config and not like what? multiple. Config. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one fucking thing. Okay, cool, man. All right, cool. Okay. Well, then see I'll you. just stop it now. I'll see you later, dude. Yeah. See you, man.